What's going on guys? In this video I'm looking at the biggest surprise trade from yesterday which involved my Detroit Red Wings. Steve Eiserman sent Philip Peronic and a fourth round pick to the Vancouver Canucks in exchange for a first and second round pick. So the first is very interesting as there are some conditions on it. I believe if it's a top 12 pick then it gets moved to a 2024 unprotected first. So that'd be pretty cool but honestly I'd probably just rather it be like in that 13 to 15 range this year. Some pretty solid players the Red Wings could get. Now obviously the big piece in this trade is Philip Peronic. And like I said, biggest surprise trade by far yesterday. I did not see the Red Wings trading him. To me, I thought maybe they move on from Bertuzzi, maybe Zadina. Uh, Bertuzzi, of course, expiring deal. Zadina really hasn't found his footing with the Red Wings, former top pick though. And we have a lot of depth at forward, not so much on defense. So I think this is the case of Eiserman selling high, Hironix having a career year. Why not try and get the best return you can from him? Obviously, we're not competing for Stanley Cup this year. Like maybe we made the playoffs, but obviously, even if we did, probably gonna get destroyed by Boston round one. So. I don't mind this trade as it stands. Obviously, Heronic, I think, is our second best defenseman behind Sider, so it does suck to see him go. Very solid offensively. Has a decent defensive game, too, aside from what some people tell you. So I think if this first round pick ends up being top 15, whether it be this year or next year, with a second, like that's a pretty solid return for Heronic, especially with Edmonton on his way. Um, hopefully some other defense on our team can step up. Obviously, they just extended Jake Wallman, who's also having a career year. Again, if you guys care about analytics at all, this season he's having is absolutely insane. Like, he's playing unreal. So I think that's a steal of a contract, 3.4 million. Also, too, we just extended the captain, Dylan Larkin. I'm so happy about that. All the memes can stop about him being traded. I never believed it. I knew he was staying in Detroit, and I was really hoping they could keep him for under 9 million. The fact they got him for 8.7, even better. Now, apparently the Canucks would be over the max salary cap with this trade, which it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, so I'll fix this real quick. And before we try this trade, guys, I should share what Heronic looks like in-game. As you can see, he's got the $4.4 million contract for the next two years, so really one more year once the season's over. 24 years old, they're 87 overall, mediumly potential. So personally, I think this is a bit high for Heronic. Um, I had it was an 86 high top four with a couple X-Factors, which by the way, guys, let me know if like for these videos in the future, would you prefer I use the EA rosters or my custom roster? I feel like mine's a bit more accurate, but obviously a lot of people just kind of want to see whether these trades would go through with like EA's ratings and stuff. So, you know, let me know. But again, looking at the trade value here, it is a bit on the Canucks side. They want Heronic though, seconds on the block, medium difficulty. This could go through, probably rejected though. Trades accepted. Okay, interesting. This might be one where both teams accept. Obviously, we'll find out. And talk to that trade, guys. Didn't update a look at the Red Wings' decor. Obviously, not that great. You got Wallman Sider top pair, which is actually pretty solid. They've been one of the better D pairs in the NHL. But then after that, like, Robert Haig, Ben Sherratt, Ole Matta, Gustav Lindstrom. Like, it's not the greatest, which is probably, like, the weirdest part about this trade for me. Not so much, you know, trading Heronic, but more so trading Heronic instead of a forward when literally, like, we have too many forwards. You guys can see there, no real superstar apart from Larkin, but we have a ton of depth, like, Right there, you can see every single line's got some decent players on it, and that's with Verana and Valeno, both in the AHL. So I feel like another trade's got to be coming here if Irishman's willing to move on from Heronic. I see at least one to two more forwards being dealt before the trade deadline. Who that's going to be, I'm not sure. But as I mentioned before, guys, next we're going to try the trade for Canucks perspective. And now, as you guys can see here, the Red Wings are interested in both the first and second round pick. I actually made a mistake earlier. I forgot to include the fourth round pick with Heronic. Now, the Canucks already said yes to just Heronic, so obviously... They would say yes to me adding like a free fourth round pick. We'll see though whether or not this changes the trade for the Red Wings. Looking at the value, it is pretty equal. They want both picks. Heronic though is on the block. Let's see what happens here, guys. Trades rejected. Okay, the value on the table is too far off. Would they do it just Heronic without the fourth? No, okay. So uh, in game, EA feels like Vancouver won this trade, of course. They accepted. The Red Wings rejected. In real life, obviously, it does hurt to see Heronic go. And in terms of who wins this trade, it's really going to come down to what Eisman does with that first round pick. If he moves it for another player, who is that player? And if he makes a pick, you got to make sure you don't miss because obviously, Heronic's like not a veteran or anything like that. He's still 24, pretty young, playing his best hockey. It's pretty risky to trade a guy like that for only draft picks against the old, like, you know, boat versus the box scenario. You have a boat already. Do you want to take the mystery box? It could be anything. Obviously, time will tell with this trade. Also, too, guys, running with the Krasov trade, Vancouver won that one big time in game. As you can see, Krasov's value there is like double, if not triple, Lockwood's. 22 years old, 78 overall, low top six. Lockwood there, 24, so older player. Lower rated, 73. Medium top nine is about the same as low top six in terms of the value, but again, older, lower rated. The Canucks did very well here. And start to this trade, guys. Here's what the Canucks lines might look like. You got Kuzmenko, Petey, Bolvier on the first line. Bolvier has actually been playing amazing since going to Vancouver. I think he's averaging like a point per game or around there. Uh, Besser, Miller, Garland. One of Garland or Besser looks to be probably getting traded by Friday. Mikhaev, Sagnika, Hoaglander on the third line. I've got Krasov, Ratu, put Colson on the fourth line. So, I mean, looking at this team, you can see they've actually got pretty decent winger depth. 
It's just their centers aren't that great, like after PD and Miller. So Nika is your third line center. He's probably ideally a fourth line center. Ratu, I don't think is quite like, you know, an NHL top six center yet. So I'll uh, need to address that position after trading away Horvat. Uh, defensively here, obviously, Heronic's really going to help them. Maybe we'll play with Hughes on the top pair. I'm curious to see what they'll do. Of course, this is when they're healthy because I think right now Ekman Larson and Bear are both out. Um, Myers, Dermott, they both might be out too. Like the Canucks are really banged up. Uh, they just got Demko back though, obviously was injured. I still think he's like a top 10 goalie in the league. So uh, we'll see what the Canucks can do last year. Clearly, trying a first round pick for Heronic. They're not trying to, you know, tank or anything in 2024. They're trying to be competitive. This year, maybe they hope they get Bedard, but next year that's not going to be the case. Now, right here, guys, I'll give you your first look at Philip Heronic with the Vancouver Canucks. Obviously, I'm a Red Wings fan. It's going to be pretty weird to see, and <laughs> that doesn't really look anything like Heronic. He definitely does not have a game face. I feel like that's one of the generic ones, and they gave him a beard. So. There you go, Heronic 17. Yeah, that's one where I'm going to have to get used to that because I don't like what I'm seeing at all. I also think, too, that face is definitely, you know, putting me off a bit. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave that thumbs up. Probably, like, a few hours after you watch this one, I'll have the Jacob Chikrin trade some out. If you don't want to miss that, make sure to subscribe as well. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.